Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful people of this beautiful planet. This is Lee Gunlock. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining, as always. And today, we are going through the most iconic, the most exciting. We're adding the next installment to the Telecom War. The greatest rivalry in the history of the LCK. It's had its ebbs and flows. There's been moments where this rivalry has been incredibly one-sided, usually in the favor of T1, except for 2018 when they were no good and KT was at the tippity top. But the last couple of years, this series, this rivalry has always delivered on the rift and the very first round of it in 2024 also lived up to the hype at the very least for game one. That is uh, because, you know, the rest of the series went a little bit differently. But game one on the Rift, even though there weren't too many insane, spicy picks that we got to see, the level that we got on the Rift was absolutely a slobber knocker, if you will. Very back and forth, 35 minutes. It felt like KT was going to run away with this thing. And then T1 constantly just stayed in classic T1 fashion. You feel like they should be down 5k gold and they're even that was how much of this game went out absolutely got some blue axes throughout Gumiyushi was stuck on no kills for like 30 minutes of this game but this was absolutely all about the engages out of barrel on Alistair because it was so unbelievably clean throughout the entire game combined uh, with what we were getting out of the Alties out of Deft on Callista, coupled with Barrel engaging, was absolutely beautiful to see. But even uh, at this point, 35 minutes, KT's behind in gold. It's obviously very close, but immaculate team fight here to close the game out. The flash in from Deft, bringing Barrel to pop Zeus, who was unbelievably fed on Rumble throughout this game, but multiple times. It was emphasis number one for KT to shut him out of the fight before he was able to do much other than drop an equalizer before he dies, because Owner spent so much of the early game getting him ahead in that matchup against Perfect, and doesn't matter when he gets popped by Mr. Barrel as that final fight with a mountain soul over the way to KT. They're able to close it out from there to take a somewhat surprising 1-0 series lead again because of how close that first matchup was. But we're seeing a different type of T1 in 2024. We're used to having a, at least one for fun game in a series where they kind of get a little bit lost in the sauce. But after a competitive game one, something woke up the beast in T1 because games two and three they were absolutely different animals I mean individually you don't even need to look at them as a team this is a level lower poppy uh against Piosic just flashing in and killing them and at the exact same time Zeus who absolutely clapped perfect on the day it was truly a a learning moment for the young rookie who's had a pretty solid debut to 2024, but Zeus is the best top laner on the planet, and he got a front row seat. School was in session across multiple matchups. I know that first game he got a lot of jungle attention, but game two, it was just all uh, Zeus, you know, getting that lead by himself, and Guma got so fed on this jinx it was i think he was almost up 50 cs at one point over deft as they eventually are going to get these double kills with the tom kench nobody in the world i'm going to say is better at piloting the jinx tom kench combo than gumiyushi and kiria and game two was an absolute case in point for that Calm, cool, and collected. I believe the Corky win streak continues for Faker. Was it 19 games now in a row that this dude has won on that pick? Absolutely disgusting levels of dominance uh, that we've seen out of him on that champion. And by the way, the three champions that Faker played today, the classics, Azir, Corky, Oriana, how many times have we seen him play these champions? Well, 286 games played across those three picks that's that's more than a lot of guys have played in their career on all champions and that's only three of them for fakers so again whatever you can fit in a nice tasty little uh faker stat we got to do it but we rolled on to game three game two was 21 minutes in the favor of t1 game three took a little bit longer but it was still an absolute 
master class out of them. Games two and three, when T1 really turned it on, 39 to eight in terms of kills uh, advantage that they had over KT and 17 to one in turrets. That's right, KT only got a single turret across both of games two and three. Zeus gets the Aatrox, which we know he could be absolutely terrifying on, but T1 quickly snowballed this into a 5K gold lead. Dev Zephelios could never really do much. Faker was landing shockwaves left, right, and center. Lucian Nami, another duo that we know the T1 bot lane is one of the very best in the world to be piloting. A lot of positives to take from T1 or KT, excuse me, from that first game, and despite a nice shuffle there from BDD. Just doesn't matter, my man. Zeus is completely unstoppable. Zeus and owner alone are like zoning out the entirety of the KT lineup. 15 to 2 win kills, an absolute stomp. This is uh, a very different looking T1. Not super different, but the dominance, I thought it would have been a slower start to them for spring. I know they dropped that series to Gen G in the very first week, but the couple of series since then, they have looked all kinds of dominant, exactly like the defending world champions that we would come to expect. Uh, not too worried about how KT played in that one. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, they got completely gapped, so maybe you should be worried, but... I feel like you get a little bit more leeway uh, if you are T1, and I think this is an invaluable experience for Perfect in the top lane to say, okay, so that's the measuring stick. That's the tippity top you want to be uh, looking to achieve when you see Zeus, so plenty of room still for growth. This is the fourth series that we've seen out of Perfect in the history of the LCK. He got, he got a lesson learned from Mr. Zeus, as many other people, even some of the best in the world, have had to do. LPL had a little bit of top dog action. BLG matching up against RNG. And BLG, we, we've still yet to see JDG on the rift. But it really feels like BLG is looking like the best squad. Incredibly early still in the LPL. But Knight, the only roster change, has fit in pretty damn seamlessly. On and Elk look like they're ready to give Ruler and Missing a run for their money in terms of being the best bot lane in the world. And Jin could very much be in the conversation for best jungler, even though he dies here on the turret dive. It's still three to one. The kills go over to BLG. Maybe this one took a little bit longer to close out than you would have thought. Uh, but I mean, Breathe had some decent rumble ultis as you see people getting popped here. But again, Elk uh, really showcasing that he was miles ahead of what we were getting out of LWX in this series and I was excited for LWX to get a fresh start on RNG hasn't quite hit the levels we were hoping for but it's only a couple of series in plenty of time uh that's just sad to see the Lucian dash into melee range to stomp you into the face Lucian and Milio oh it's it's a terrifying combination of that <clears throat> excuse me ended up being an ace over for BLG and they were able to close that game out even though this series ended up being a sweep, it was somewhat competitive. You know, there was some back and forth, some pushback out of RNG as we roll into that second game, which was a lot of night looking damn good on the Akali. This is a dream Akali game because look, this is the squishiest team comp we've seen in 2024. Anytime you're dropping the brand jungle in, you're expecting it to be squishy, but that coupled with the rumble top, Breathe got even more of more fed in this second game than he did in the first, but he just couldn't land any type of meaningful ulties in any of the team fights when they mattered the most. This was the team fight that snowballed the game heavily into BLG's favor, where they were able to close it out from there. Tanguyuan gets a couple of kills on Tristana, but it does not matter because that comp is so squishy. Knight could just blow them up and how many times did Tom catch save somebody the TK plus Senna is such a good combo against this full DPS comp that we were getting out of BLG so top esports now RNG falling to the wayside at the hands of Billy Billy Gaming who again look like the front runners and I think even heading into the preseason because JDG made more roster changes and lost Guys like Knight and 369, I think you'd be hard pressed to argue that at the very least top lane wasn't a big downgrade. You can talk about Yagao be good uh, and comparable as a change from Knight, but that top lane is a big downgrade. BLG were the favorites coming in. They're looking 
pretty damn good so far. Ben just had to run around on the oot here for the majority uh, of this series. So by no means have we reached the final form that we're getting out of BLG. And again, proving time and time again that last year was the furthest thing from a fluke with how great a year they had. You can't call it a fluke when it was like six plus months of them competing at some of the highest levels across the entire globe. It's crazy we still haven't seen JDG on the rip, but can't wait to compare them to BLG at the top of the table. But that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. Thank you, you beautiful people across the globe for tuning in as always. And you best believe that we will catch you on that flippity flip. Mm -hmm.